what's up guys welcome to another video today we're building the 135 mobile wagon by border hey guys happy to be back uh, just some uh, history feature uh, about the mobile wagon. Um, this model were only put into service on the Western Front in April 1944. Uh, basically, the mobile wagon was built on a Panzer IV chassis that had been damaged on the Eastern Front and returned to the factory for repair. Uh, the rumor said that uh, only 240 were produced uh, and eventually succeeded um, by the first true flak panzer. To be honest with you, uh, I was a bit scared at the beginning because I did some other border uh, model, but uh, this one uh, basically was a charm to build. Like most of the kit that I built, uh, I started uh, with a black primer from Baleo but you can use uh, any uh, any black primer you want it doesn't really matter after that i want to uh, to do some kind of a rusty color so you can uh, you can use a german black brown or german red brown <laughs> it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be better but any uh, any kind of a rust color that you can apply uh, it's uh, it's gonna be for the chipping effect that we will do later on on the video it's gonna be a, a longer video than usual because I just want to take the time to show you the full painting and weathering process on this vehicle. It's kind of a pretty rare model. Uh, not a lot of uh, fellow YouTubers or scale modeler did this one. So uh, I just want to show you because honestly it's a really nice kit. And it's uh, instead of doing like a tiger or, or whatever, it's something new. So I hope you like it. If you like what I do, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And you can hit uh, that bell icon to uh, see all the other uh, videos coming in. I will post uh, a lot more video in the next uh, few weeks, months, because I have a crazy amount of material, but uh, I didn't have the time to edit it. So uh, wait and you will see that um, a lot of new video will pop up. Also, uh, don't forget to apply uh, the same uh, the same color, uh, the rusting, the rust color. Uh, on the wheels because uh, we would like to have the, the same kind of effect on the wheel and on the turret also so uh, it's gonna be uniform but like I said it's gonna be um, the setup for a pretty uh, pretty awesome chipping effect let's put the vehicle aside for a moment and uh, we will start working on the track uh, the thing is we will do some kind of a dry brush, I would say, uh, with um, with dark rust. The first part will be dark rust. This one will be uh, light rust. So it's kind of a two part process and just go on the outside of the track. Now back to the vehicle, we will use uh, some air spray. Uh, the brand is uh, Très Aimé in French. Uh, obviously French is my native language, not from France, but from Canada. So, um, so you can use any brand of air spray you want. Uh, just apply like a really thin coat of air spray because we don't want to do some large patch of chipping and um, and that will do the trick after we apply the air spray we're applying the primary color 
So it's a mix of um, uh, German beige and dark yellow. 80% German beige and roughly 20% of dark yellow. So you will apply this, uh, this color uh, all around uh, the vehicle. That will be our primary color. Now this part, it's kind of a new thing for me. It's kind of a lazy trick, I would say, to do some camouflage on your, uh, on your vehicle. It's a uh, camouflage plastic putty from AK. I've been using, uh, I would say lately, to do, uh, to do some camouflage. I used to do a lot of freehand stuff with, with the airbrush, but uh, in this case I will first want to show you uh, different, uh, different material you can use if you're not, uh, I would say, comfortable with, uh, with the airbrush. Uh, with this buddy, it's gonna be super easy. Um, yeah, honestly, it's it's super nice, and uh, it's a lot easier. So with this model, uh, I want to do uh, a winter camouflage uh, to make uh, to make it different. It's uh, basically it will be the uh, a model that will be located in Hungary in 1945 so I'm using a washable white by AK but you can use uh, any uh, any white that you have uh, in hand because we're gonna do some kind of a, a white wash later on but uh, I would say the primary color just choose a not a glossy white but kind of a flat white uh, that will do the trick a lot of people talk to me and ask me about the, the winter camouflage a lot of people are afraid to do it um, I don't know exactly why but uh, it's something I would say not simple but it's really obvious and and even for beginners uh, it's something that uh, you will first have fun to do because it's kind of different and um, it's not that hard, honestly. It's only a matter of uh, of technique and and apply it on a really thin coat, not big blobs of uh, of paint. But um, yeah, it's super fun and uh, it's a nice challenge. If you're a beginner, I would say don't be afraid to do a winter camouflage. The gun is a simple 3.7 centimeter flak, 83, uh, 43, sorry, um, L89. Though the mobile wagon was intended to be a, a stopgap, it served the anti-aircraft platoons of the Panzer Division on the Western Front. After you apply your white paint, now it's the fun part. Removing this body. It's kind of easy, but there's some places that uh, the putty will stick a little bit more. But it's not like, it's not gummy or something like that. It's more of a plastic. That's why it's called plastic putty, I think. <laughs> it's obvious, but uh, sorry. Um, but the thing is, um, you can remove it really easy by using your um, your hobby knife or any anything with a, with a pointy uh, pointy thing. So um, so yeah, it's it's a really simple process, really fun, enjoyable, and this is why we're doing this hobby just to relax and have fun. You see that the camouflage turns out pretty good, obviously. And um, don't complain because I'm doing something wrong. Because normally we have to apply some kind of a varnish before applying the decals. But in this case, the decals are so small that it doesn't really matter. 
Now it's time for chipping. So just use a really old brush that you have in hand and we're gonna do it with water. So just dip your brush in water and gently um, apply the water on your model and just do some some kind of a, I would say a brush stroke. You see that, you see in this case, I put a little bit too much airspray and that's why I have uh, a really big chip like that. It doesn't really matter because it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be removed with all the weathering we will do later on. But uh, the results are really great with the chipping effect. You can also do uh, the stippling effect by using uh, kind of a, I would say a rusty color and uh, stippling with uh, with a sponge or a really um, really small brush. But uh, in this case, the chipping effect uh, do a really good job. So that's why I choose to do with the chipping effect. Again, just try to locate your effect on the edge of, uh, of the turret in this case, but also your vehicle, like the nuts, the bolts, uh, all the different parts that uh, obviously rust a little bit more than, um, than the other one. But um, I would say just go on the edge and do it gently. Uh, like I said, I remove a big chunk of uh, of paint because I was uh, I was too in too in a rush or whatever. So same thing with the wheel. The wheel could be a little bit more um, chipping. For all the wood part on uh, the German vehicle, I use Vallejo Old Wood. It's a really nice color and um and yeah use it on german vehicle i'm not going to use the same color on u.s tank or russian tank but on german that's perfect now the rust effect uh, i was a little bit heavy on the chipping effect with the air spray uh for uh for this part but um, doing stippling the first part was do uh was um to do a dark rust stippling effect uh, from Vallejo but there's other brand who do a kind of a dark rust that's the first part just do some gently uh, gentle stippling the second part will be to apply the light rust again from Vallejo uh, I have a lot of Vallejo paint I probably have all the colors and all the weathering effect and things like that but also I have uh, AK and things like that now it's uh, it's pigment time so we're using uh, Vallejo oxide <coughs> oxide rust sorry I'm losing my voice um, but yeah it's a really gentle and really nice effect now it's time for gloss varnish the gloss varnish uh, will help you for the weathering effect. Uh, it's gonna help uh, your um, your wash, your pin wash, flow really nicely uh, and through the crevasses and uh, all the all the different parts. So and it all it will also fix the decal. I'm using uh, enamel wash in this case because it's a lot easier and you have uh, so much um, control over it comparing to uh, water-based uh, washes. It's a lot easier because you can remove the excess with uh, enamel thinner after, uh, after you, you put your washes. So that's why the result will be, uh, will be great. Uh, you will see a little later on that uh, you can easily remove uh, all the excess paint that you put on your model to to have a more realistic feel and things like that. So just use um, a paintbrush 
uh, fill it with uh, enamel thinner and uh, you can remove the excess paint that you put uh, all over the place that will uh, give you a really awesome uh, awesome effect this part is I would say optional but uh, I really like to add as much detail as possible on my model I'm using uh, carbon black pigments again from Vallejo um, but like I said it's you're not gonna be it's it's not gonna be as visible uh, as it possibly be but um, I really like to add some some really uh, really nice detail and also I'm using uh, the uh, pigment binder just to uh, fix all the pigment in place and uh, I put a lot of, uh, of binder, a little bit too much. <laughs> so that's why I'm using my brush to figure it out and lay down my pigments the way I, I want or the way I liked. Again, uh, just putting uh, some pigments on the gun just to give, uh, it's give a really subtle but really nice effect. Again, we're on the, the detail part of, uh, of building our model. I'm using uh, Liquid Gold by Vallejo, but any, any gold color will do the trick. I love the Liquid Gold because um, I would say the pigment in the paint is, uh, is really nice. So the result will be, uh, will be good. Using Dark Rubber from Vallejo, I'm just finishing the wheel, uh, the outside of the wheel. It's something that um, you can use, I would say a black, uh, blackish color, German black brown or, or something you have in hand. It doesn't have to be like the specific color, like rubber, uh, rubber color, but a black or uh, I would say a German black will be great. Now, my favorite part. In this case, I'm using Winter Streaking Grimes um, to do some really cool effect. Honestly, um, the weathering effect is probably the most satisfying and it's gonna give life to your model. And it's, um, I'm, not, I'm not a miniature painter or, or things like that, but the thing is with, with armor modeling, you can probably do whatever you want. Um, I really like to keep the history, uh, color, and, and different things like that, like it's supposed to be. But on the weathering part of uh, creating your model, you can have fun. And um, that's the way it is. The streaking grimes uh, will give you a really, uh, really nice effect. Uh, in this case, it's for winter camouflage, so that's why it's called uh, winter streaking grimes. But I have uh, a lot of different streaking that I'm using for, for example, green collar vehicle. Um, I don't know African Africa corpse, uh, like kind of a camouflage beige or something like that. To finish the track, I'm just gonna do a, a gentle dry brush of natural steel. Um, since it will be covered with with dust and, and different different pigments, it doesn't gonna show, but it's a really nice touch to, to add to your um, to your weathering. Now with the earth effect. Depending on uh, what would you want to do with your vehicle. In this case, uh, it's for uh, a diorama on, uh, like I said, in Hungary. So it's going to be a winter diorama, but it's going to be really muddy. So that's why I'm applying uh, in the first layer will be uh, dry earth. Um, like I said, just apply it on uh, randomly, but the place that uh, the earth will, will fly. <laughs> 
<laughs> all over the place. So you, do, you don't have to be perfect and uh, just apply it randomly. But on, uh, on the places that you feel that uh, it's going to be more muddy than, uh, than the other places. Um, the second part of this one will be to use um, a fresh mud because there's some area of your tank that will uh, that the, the earth will dry but um, there's some fresh uh, fresh earth that you uh, you will apply later on and again it's uh, super easy to do and you can um, you can apply it all over um, the the place that uh, will will show some um, some different things that's why being an armor modeler is super fun because like I said I'm not a really good painter uh, overall and when I start this hobby 25 years ago um, I was trying to I don't know make it perfect with my paint job and, and things like that because when I start um, doing modeling I start with cars when I was younger and the car you have to make it perfect but with armor modeling you don't have to be perfect at all because all, all the time or I would say most of the time it's based on an area or it's gonna be for a diorama that you build so that's why it doesn't have to be perfect and those uh, those AK uh, enamel uh, earth different things um, you can also blend it with uh, with enamel thinner after all so it's gonna be a really nice effect so that's it for today don't forget to subscribe and uh, if you really like what I do um, you can join me uh, and become a Patreon. It will be greatly appreciated. Have a good one, guys.